Okay, assalamualaikum everyone. Once again, for the folks who are joining us in, um, welcome. And I hope you guys are all having a wonderful weekend and uh, enjoying the last 10 days of Ramadan. Um, so inshallah, I just wanna go ahead and first give you a brief uh, update on some stuff that's going on. And then we're gonna go ahead and continue with this planned presentation. So I know folks have questions, inshallah, <clears throat> I'm sure many of them will be answered throughout this presentation. So what I'm asking everyone to do is just hold off right now. I did go ahead and just um, uh, keep the Q&A muted because I'm sure what's going to happen is I answer questions throughout the presentation um, while people are answering the questions that are being answered. So, or asking the questions that are being answered. So inshallah afterwards, we'll go ahead and open up the Q&A. If you have any additional questions, we can go ahead and, and answer them at that point. Um, but uh, please go ahead and give me uh, at least the length of this presentation to go ahead and address most of your concerns. And then we'll go ahead and uh, open up that uh, Q&A session. Um, now, I know that most of the folks here should already be in the um, round, or sorry, the Al-Raji confirmed Haji WhatsApp group. But if you're not, I'm going to go ahead and put the, the link again in the chat in a minute um, so that you can go ahead and join that. The other thing that uh, if you haven't done so already is fill out that Google form. And I'm going to go into in, in a minute exactly why it's really important that you fill that out. Um, but uh, please, if you haven't already, just go ahead and fill out the Google form for the um, people who've you know, purchased packages. And in addition to that, um, yeah, just make sure you're in the WhatsApp group. So these are gonna be the two main tools of communication. Uh, for this, you know, in between limbo phase that we're in right now, um, while we wait on the official data from Nusik as far as uh, who was able to purchase a package. Um, so, uh, if you guys haven't been keeping track or, or aren't aware, there was basically a, a third round of selling that's supposed to happen. It was supposed to happen Friday, it got extended to um, Saturday, and now get Got, is getting pushed to this coming Tuesday. Um, my point of bringing this up is number one, I'm sure you all are aware of how these rounds of sell selling have gone. There's been uh, uh, plenty of delays in the first two rounds and we're seeing it again in round three. Um, the main concern that would, would uh, involve the, the folks such as yourselves who've already went ahead and purchased a package is that um, we're not expecting the data from Nusuk as far as who has purchased the package until all the rounds of selling are done. Um, so while I get to hear from you guys, and it's always wonderful to hear from you guys, um, we're, we're stuck in this uh, in-between stage uh, until uh, the um, final lists come in of who it was able to purchase a package. So in the meanwhile, you know, we were, uh, my, my real hope for this meeting was that in the last two days, the selling would have been done. Alhamdulillah, the round three people would have been able to join us and we would have been able to go ahead and give you a more um, robust uh, timeline as far as what the future holds. I do apologize. There's going to be some stuff I'm not going to have answers on just because we haven't gotten that data yet, right? I, for example, don't know um, who's on which specific flight, who's on which specific uh, package, what sort of occupancy has been chosen. But inshallah, to the best of my ability, I'm going to go ahead and try to address those concerns and provide you guys with a timeline as far as what to expect. So those are the kind of main points that I want to make sure I'm hitting before we jump right into this. Um, and again, I know there are folks raising their hands. I'm going to put them down for now. Please hold your questions till the end. I'm sure I'll address your uh, concerns if it's something I can address at this point. Um, otherwise, uh, we will open up the Q&A later on as well. Okay, so this is just a little brief uh, introductory uh, page for those who may be new to al Rashi. Although I'm sure many of you have been joining us on our webinars, um, both through that NUSIC registration phase and through the selling phase. Um, if you happen to be new to us, welcome. We're always happy to have uh, you aboard. Um, uh, NUSIC uh, Al Rajhi, uh, as you all would know at this point, is one of the 10 companies that's providing HUD services on uh, the NUSIC platform. Alhamdulillah. They've been doing this work for a very long time with local hajis, like the domestic hajis within Saudi Arabia. Um, 
for almost 60 years now. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, brothers and sisters, if you don't mind, please don't raise your hand. Um, I will go ahead and answer your questions, but it, 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 it's just uh, distracting to see those pop-ups. Um, I will go ahead and give you guys that opportunity later on. Anyways, um, so as <clears throat> far as um, their work in the international community goes, last year was the first year with the Nusuk 1.0. Um, Alhamdulillah, they were able to serve, provide service to 7,000 Hajis across the world, including about 1,300 right from right here in the U.S. Uh, we are expecting around the same amount this year. So a uh, big group, inshallah, uh, a few guys going from the U.S. So um, just some brief uh, ideas of, uh, you know, what we value over here between uh, Al-Raji and Nur Fajr, which is the U.S. partner for Al-Raji. Um, now, don't be confused if you're in one of the, the U.S.-based packages, but from a different country. I know there are quite a, a few of you. Um, the way Nusuk worked this year, right, was that you were able to pick up a package from any country. Um, now, of course, that means that there's folks from the U.S. who are in packages supported by European offices, and there's folks from other countries who are in packages supported uh, by the U.S. offices. Um, Inshallah, you will be with the team that's supporting your package. Uh, in the case of the, the packages supported by my office, I have been over them quite a bit. Um, and Inshallah, we'll uh, go ahead and um, go, go over them uh, in a bit as well. But uh, for those who are familiar, in round one, you know, from day one, we've been supporting luxury line one, luxury line two, luxury shifting line one. We've also added on luxury line three and uh, luxury line four, or sorry, two luxury line four um, as part of round two and three. Um, so let's hop right into those concerns. Okay. One of the main concerns folks have had is, you know, how your information or your itinerary looks like in NUSUK, right? So um, make sure, you know, if you have the paid sign, right? and your e-wallet has been deducted, don't worry about any of the other stuff. So if you didn't get your, um, for example, an email confirmation, or if your specific itinerary isn't showing up in Nusuk, don't worry about it. Um, at this point, you know, everyone here is, I'm sure is familiar with some of the um, technical issues with Nusuk. Um, so, the main thing in order to confirm that your package has been purchased is that paid button and the um, e-wallet being deducted. As far as those two things are done, you're all set to go, inshallah. Okay. Okay, this is another one of those things that we got a lot of panic messages about and calls about, which is why does my itinerary show a zone D hotel? Um, Noor, you've been talking about day one, that that Al-Raji has zone A hotels. Um, these are luxury packages. That is all correct. Unfortunately, another victim of the technical issues within Nusuk. Um, I actually put a, a post up on our Instagram page and shared it in our WhatsApp group uh, of the, the Hotel Makkah Towers, which is the, the one where most of you will be staying, inshallah, um, which is right in front of the Haram. Just to assure you guys that inshallah you are right in front of the harm. That was just a technical glitch um, as far as Nusuk is concerned. And uh, the other hotel for the shifting packages and for line three will be, and line four will be Swiss Mecca, which is also very, very close to the Haram. If you're familiar with or you've ever been for Umrah, uh, that's within the clock tower complex. Um, when and how can I get my refund? So there was two reasons why when I did the first version of this about a week ago, I... Um, recommended holding off on getting your refund. And by refund, what I mean is if you have a remaining balance in your e-wallet, requesting that money back. Um, the first reason was I was worried about whether people would accidentally cancel their packages while trying to get that uh, refund. And the second thing was there was this, um, there's two kind of charges that come with um, requesting that refund. Number one is that um, you can go ahead and, uh, sorry, you have the 1.5% processing fee. 
um, charge that was, you know, presented to you when you were uh, charging up or loading up your uh, e-wallet. And then the second fee, which was unexpected, and we were, we just kind of discovered together um, once people started requesting those withdrawals um, uh, right after round one was the 15% VAT, right? So now that 15% VAT isn't on the full amount of the of the package, it's on the 1.5% uh, processing fee. So basically your total processing fee when you, you put it together comes out to 1.725 instead of 1.5. Um, there was these discussions between service providers and the ministry uh, on behalf of the judge that, you know, is this VAT going to be removed? Why there is a VAT? Uh, at this point, it seems like this is not going to be removed. Um, so if you want to go ahead and request your refund or request the remaining balance back of your um, e-wallet, you can go ahead and do so. The way you would do so is if you're on your dashboard and you have this screen right here, you'll go to view e-wallet, or you can access this from the, the profile page up here as well. Um, and then go ahead and just hit that withdrawal button. It'll go ahead and start the uh, process of refunding any balance left in your wallet. Um, as far as timeline on this goes, the official timeline provided by uh, Nusuk, uh, I believe is two to 28 business days. Um, based on some of the information I've seen, it's been um, uh, pretty consistent with the, the larger amounts are taking longer. They haven't hit the bank accounts just yet and the smaller amounts were refunded pretty quickly. Um, so just something to keep in mind as well. And generally speaking from last year's experience, actually, you know, credit cards get refunded a lot quicker than um, uh, bank accounts do. So if you did go ahead and do a wire transfer, it may take a little bit more time. For those who may be wondering how your refund is going to come back to you, it's going to come back to you at the source used. So if you used a credit card, it'll get, you know, it'll be a reverse transaction back to that card. If you used it, did a wire transfer, when you did your wire transfer, you were asked for your own bank information and the withdrawal of the e-wallet was the reason for that. So you can go ahead and, um, you know, hit that withdrawal button. And if you did a wire transfer, it'll go back to the bank account you provided within the Um, The final point on this is I know some people ask, hey, we have just a small amount in there. We'd rather avoid the 1.5 or 1.725 um, processing fee. Can we go ahead and use this amount for something else? Um, like, can it be used to purchase a dahi, you know, like your sacrifice afterwards or any additional um uh, things on the ground within within the kingdom once I'm on Hajj? And the answer is no. This was just exclusively for purchasing your Hajj package. So you can go ahead and uh, get a refund on any remaining balance in there. Okay. One of the other really important questions um, that I want to make sure people are hearing is that um, the question uh, regarding when will my Hajj visa be issued, right? Um, there's no official timeline provided by Nusuk. Um, last year, visas were being issued until several days before uh, people flew out. Hopefully, inshallah, this year, we're expecting the process to be a little bit earlier than that because all of the HUD, the whole entire Hajj purchasing process, process this year has been earlier than it was last year, right? Uh, by about a month. So hopefully, inshallah, you will get those visas sooner rather than later. But it's going to take time. You shouldn't expect it right at the second. Um, you know, at the moment, Nusuk itself as a platform is still going through sales, right? There's still this round three sales uh, here in the U.S. You know, the quota has been met uh, for round two sales. But across the world, there's still many countries where uh, people are purchasing Hajj packages. So this visa issuance process by their team over at Nusuk um, won't start until folks are done with um they're done with the selling aspect of it. Um, they'll go ahead and issue the visa and they'll upload it onto your NUSUK accounts and it'll be visible there for you. There's no additional steps for you to take. There's no additional payments you have to make, nothing like that. If you have any um, concerns with the name on your account or um, any additional information there where you feel like there, there's something, there's some corrective action needed, um, we can go ahead and facilitate that, make sure you're letting us know that 
you know, I've already spoken to a couple of brothers and sisters who, you know, are going through citizenship processing or situations where they may um, need some additional assistance with the visas. That's something, number one, definitely make sure you're including on that Google form so we're aware of it as soon as possible. Um, but that's also an issue that I would go ahead and escalate directly to the uh, office number so that I'm, uh, you know, aware of your scenario as soon as possible and you can um, uh, go ahead and make sure that that's taken care of. Okay, so now we've got folks in two groups when it comes to flighting flights, right? Uh, there's the folks who are on group flights and those, and then there are those that are on custom flights. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about group flights first and then inshallah, I'll go ahead and address the custom flights folks. Um, I'm sure you all noticed that you received the itinerary for your group flight, but you haven't received the actual ticket. That's because your ticket has to be issued by Al-Raji, right? It's not issued by Nusuf. Al-Raji can't go through the process of issuing that ticket until we get the information as far as who purchased the package and which flight was chosen uh, within Nusuf. Um, <clears throat> again, we're, we're stuck in this limbo phase. I do apologize, brothers and sisters. I wish there was more certainty with the timeline as well. Um, but until these you know, the sales period finishes, we're not able to, to, to move on to this next step and we're stuck in this limbo phase, right? Um, so based on the current timeline, we're, we've been told sales round three is supposed to happen Tuesday. This is the second time it's being rescheduled. So hopefully, inshallah, they're able to correct whatever issues they need to do and can uh, wrap up sales this week and get us that data we need. Um, and we can start to issue tickets, right? Uh, and start that first we have to start that verification process reach out to everyone make sure all of your data your passport information date of birth everything is correct before we can start uh, sending over those lists to saudi airlines and turkish airlines our two partners um, uh, to issue your tickets and start uh, providing them to you so as far as timeline goes for when you may uh, expect them uh, you can expect mid to late april inshallah Generally speaking, um, tickets are not changeable on group flights, right? So there's been folks who've already asked like, hey, can we go ahead and um, extend our stay or shorten our trip or um, upgrade to business class? Group flights are called, you know, they're group flights. They're, it's, it's a specific classification of ticket in which you're generally not able to make changes. Um, at the same time, I know there was a lot of folks who during the checkout process Again, I understand how, how, how chaotic that checkout process can be um, when, when sales are live, um, went ahead and chose a flight from a different city than the one they're in um, in order to go ahead and secure their hajj package. As far as what you're guaranteed, right? It's what you checked out with in Nusuk. Now, I already know there's been people who reached out to me who are in a package with the DC flight and would have preferred a Chicago flight. There's folks who are in a Chicago flight who would prefer a DC flight. I am more than happy to try to facilitate um, and switch around folks if it's possible, but that's a very big if, and it's not going, going to be possible to see until we get that final data from Nusuk and we get your requests and we can kind of play around and play this game of Tetris and see um, if folk, the number of people who want to move flights matches and we can move people around. Um, so I'll take the request um, in that Google form. There will be another package specific Google form that's sent out again once we get your emails and phone numbers um, from Nusuk. Um, and, and you can certainly go ahead and request it in that form as well. Um, and, and the idea is, you know, we're, tr we're not trying to make this difficult for you. As much as we can accommodate, we're happy to try. Um, but as far as um, what's guaranteed it's going to be what's on your itinerary uh that's provided to us by no second that's visible to you uh inshallah if not already going forward um will be visible to you uh in Nusuk. so that that's group flights uh, the other thing about group flights i get this question sorry a lot is will we have a guide with us and the answer is yes um the tour guides will be uh, joining along with the folks who are on the group flights. For, for folks who are on custom flights, inshallah, I'm going to go ahead and talk about how your flight aspect will work. But as far as how your guide aspect will work, inshallah, you'll meet your guide once you're in the kingdom.
sorry, didn't mean that do do that. Okay, custom flights. Um, so I know there no one should have should still have this issue, but in case you still did, uh, if you received any email asking you for additional payments from the airlines, please disregard. You don't have to worry about that. Um, your your uh, the payment for your flight was done via missile. Um, now I've also gotten a lot of messages and inquiries about people who did custom flights and are looking for some sort of route or date change um, either because you know the, they weren't able to find an ideal flight or they weren't able to um, there was some sort of issue with the layover there's been a, a lot of different reasons why people have needed those route or date changes um, unfortunately the main issue is that Nusuk who is the party uh, who is in charge of your tickets for the custom flight folks uh, has very um, clearly stated that they would not do any route or date changes, right? So I actually took this screenshot from Musafir. This is the custom flights page in Nusuk. It's still available there right now. Um, but if you take a look as part of their like notice over here, as far as when you can and can't enter the uh, kingdom, uh, one of the things they talk about is that your amendment options are limited and route and date change is not permitted. I do apologize to the people who have custom flights and want to go ahead and make changes. Um, but in 98% of the cases, it looks like you're not able to make a change. Um, the reason why I say 98% is because I know that folks have been calling the different airlines. And there was one particular airline that I was told that went ahead and helped them change the ticket. And I believe that that was Emirates. Um, other than that, um, you, uh, what do you call, uh, you can try to contact the airline, but most folks have not been able to, uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, they haven't had success with it. Saudi airlines, for example, uh, uh hasn't, uh, been accommodating this. Many of the other airlines have not been accommodating this. Um, so unfortunately, that's that's kind of the scenario with that. Um, let me take a look here. What were the other concerns? Oh, custom flights. Inshallah, we will get the itinerary that you have already booked in Nusuk as part of that, you know, uh, information exchange that's going to happen, uh, hopefully sometime soon. So we'll be able to go ahead and then coordinate with you as far as ground transportation goes. Someone from the Al Rachi team will be meeting you at the airport. Uh, to go ahead and help you get to the right hotel, um, whether that be within the same city or whether you have to be taken to a different city, right? This is a question that gets asked a lot. Um, if I had to do round trip Jeddah, round trip Medina, will I get transportation to the opposite city? Um, yes, you will. For the, our for our group flights, you know, most of them are multi uh, city, so you're landing in the correct city with the custom flight. I know a lot of people had to do group. Uh, um, uh, group, sorry, round trip tickets. Um, so don't worry about the ground trans ground transportation aspect of that. Um, as far as um the uh the the tickets go for folks who went ahead and did custom flights from like uh, Middle Eastern gateways, you can go ahead and purchase your um ticket for from the US to the Middle Eastern Gateway. So for people who may be confused, you know, one of the things we recommended in order to make sure you're able to align better uh, your um, your uh, tickets to your itinerary, we told folks, you know, choose a flight from Jeddah to, uh, sorry, from uh, Dubai to Jeddah or Amman to Jeddah, a shorter flight within Nusuk, and then you can do a round trip from the US to one of those gateway cities um, in order to make sure you're able to number one, check out easier and have a flight that works better with the package. Um, you can go ahead and choose a flight at this point. Um, the only thing I would recommend is make sure you have at least a four hour layover between your um, uh, first flight and your second flight, right? Uh, that's That actually also comes with flight folks. I know there's a lot of people who did group flights who need to uh, purchase domestic tickets. Um, folks who are on Saudi airline flights, you can go ahead and already start that process. Folks who are on Turkish airline flights, so that's basically anyone on a Chicago flight, 
uh, I would go ahead and hold off. And actually anybody who's looking for, to try to get any sort of change, I would ask to hold off on those domestic tickets until we can go ahead and get that um, information from Nusuk and see if we can accommodate some of those changes. Um, so, yep, the, the, but the domestic flight too, just make sure you're having, like from the time you land, you have four hours until your next flight. Okay, another thing that we get a lot of uh, inquiries about is rooming requests and upgrades. So rooming requests is, is as far as like, you know, can I, my friend is also coming or somebody in a, a family member in a different NUSUK account is all, also on the same package as me. Can we make sure that we stay together? Um, and the answer is yes, we're more than happy to go ahead and accommodate rooming requests as long as you're in the same package and occupancy type of course. Um, and all this stuff is going to happen further down the road, right? So as far as when we're talking about timeline, uh, we will be starting this process probably in May. Uh, once all the tickets have been issued, once everything else is done as far as flights, um, once we've started the webinars and you guys have had a chance to meet each other as well for folks who may be traveling individually and uh, would want to try to get to know some folks uh, before they want to uh, give their rooming uh, requests. So we're more than happy to do this. You can go ahead and add it in the Google form and we'll go ahead and when we're starting that process, look at those requests. Um, there will be a specific rooming request form that goes out to you guys. Um, for folks who are already in a family and chose the right occupancy, you'll be staying with your family. So say for example, you're a family of three and you all chose triple occupancy, you're automatically will be able to uh, be together. Um, same thing if you're a couple and you chose a double, you'll be together. This is more so for folks who may be on different packages or you know friends who are traveling, uh, who've purchased the same package with different accounts and wanna try to get together um, in, in the rooms. Um, Upgrade requests, we've been getting a lot of those too. And actually the first bullet point here I forgot to address is the, the variance in rooming occupancy, right? So one of the things that service providers weren't aware of was how you would be presented as the Haji, the, the rooming configuration page. Um, and I'm sure as you all have realized at this point, you were able to choose a different rooming configuration based on the uh, for each different hotel. So you could choose to do a double, triple quad in Medina, a double, triple quad in Mecca, and then for the shifting packages in Azizia. Um, let's take a look here. Um, as far as what's happened because of this is, we know at the, at the, what happened because of this is people have chosen mixed uh, occupancies, right? Maybe a double in one city, a triple in a different city. Um, and we know this because people who are trying to check out later on were forced to do doubles and triples because of what the availability looked like, right? Um, whatever it is that you checked out within Nusuk is the configuration we're obliged you know, to provide, right? Um, that's the guaranteed provision. Um, as far as requests go to upgrade to a double, say if you're a couple and you wanna to try to go to a couple, we can certainly take that request again. We can go ahead and look at the hotel availability, but again, we, we can't make any sort of guarantee. Um, as far as I can even tell you about certain hotels, we know that there's just no availability left. For example, Mukka Towers, we are booked out. There's uh, no availability to change the uh, rooming occupancy over there. Rafah Hotel, um, there may be some room. Um, it, it depends on how round three sales go, right? Um, so if we have the uh, ability to to offer upgrades, if we have the ability to, to accommodate that sort of stuff, we're more than happy to do so. It's again, just gonna depend on what the hotel availability looks like. Um, if you weren't able to pick up a, a double in Nusuk, it's because there wasn't a double available, right? There was a certain number that were booked out and, um, uh, by the time you know you were able to check out, they it was completed uh, or it was sold out. Um, Adahi, that's another one that we get a lot of questions about. Um, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to purchase it, uh, purchase your sacrifice, purchase your um, um, uh, Qurbani or your Hadi, you know, whichever language uh, or word you want to use for it um, between now and when uh, Hajj 
uh, or when out of the day of uh, Eid happens, right, which is the day that your your sacrifice has to happen, um, you'll be able to purchase this directly on the Adahi website. It's actually not up uh, live yet because the this happens like right before Hajj time. So inshallah, you can just go ahead and log in and we'll let you know when that, that goes live and be able to just go ahead and purchase your uh, um your, your sacrifice at that time, but there'll also be plenty of options to purchase on site in the kingdom, right? So there's representatives from Adahi who come to the hotels um, and, you know, you can purchase directly over there, you know, make a payment via card, make a payment via cash. Um, you'll have opportunities to do it even in the days of Mina, right? They come into the Mina tents and uh, go ahead and um, uh, take, take payments from people for Adahi. So uh, brothers and sisters, that's something you definitely don't have to worry about. Inshallah, you'll have plenty of opportunity to go ahead and make sure and ensure that your obligation is completed before the days of uh, before the the day of Eid. Okay, for wheelchair services, right? Um, I, you know the first form has already gone out, and I already put this info out last Tuesday. But you know, you we, there will be additional forms that go out once we go ahead and get that confirmed data from Nusuk. Um. And we'll be able to go ahead and accommodate that. I know we had to tell a lot of you that uh, take the wheelchair, take out the adahi from your carts because of issues with checking out with additional services. That doesn't mean we're not going to provide the additional services. It was just because of the way Nusuk was and it was finicky and we just wanted to make sure everyone was able to at least check out. So if you need a wheelchair for a member of your party, just go ahead and let us know in that uh, Google form. There will be a specific question related to it in the more detailed package specific forms. Uh, that go out later on um, and just let us know that you need that wheelchair and we'll make sure it's um, uh, ready for you. Okay, so hopefully inshallah that addresses most of the major concerns uh, as far as uh, some of the the, the information that um, people are asking about. Now, I did want to address one thing before I go into what, what to expect going forward, which is, you know, I, brothers and sisters, am in a lot of those general Hajj groups as you guys are, and they, they're they really beneficial. The reason why I'm in a lot of them is because when I was trying to crowdsource, crowdsource solutions to a lot of the issues um, that people were having with verifications and topping up the e-wallet and stuff like that, um, I was learning from the same sources you guys were. And it was this great platform to crowdsource and get information. But I do want you guys to also realize that there's also a lot of misinformation, right? And a lot of speculation that's happening in these groups, um, which is which is just the nature of the internet. We all know this at this point with anything. But what I've noticed in particular is there's some spe specific questions I've gotten and I was surprised to get them. And uh, then I found out it was something said by someone in a group and it just kind of snowballed into to questions that don't relate to how Hajj is uh, operating or how Hajj specifically is operating for people going from Western countries via Nusuk, right? Um, the system for Nusuk is different than how, how the system may be for other countries um, where they have most Muslim majority populations and they still have a direct Hajj, uh, sorry, a business, uh, like a, the government is involved and they have a third party Hajj system versus this direct Hajj system that we're dealing with where everyone is purchasing directly uh, via the Saudi government's platform, aka Nusuk. So I just want to make sure I go ahead and put that disclaimer out there um, that, you know, some of the information you may re be reading, don't assume it's always correct. Uh, you're more than happy, you know, I'm more than happy to go ahead and address those sorts of questions. Um, but uh, I, I got some people coming back to me very frazzled about certain things and very worried. And I realized it was because of these groups. So I just want to make sure I, I let you guys know and be aware of that. Okay, so let me go ahead and continue here. Okay, this is the page I had to change because of the fact that selling it, or this round three selling didn't wrap up as um, we expected in the last two days. Um, so I know everyone wants to get started on finding out more specific logistics on their itinerary. I know there's specific questions related to it. And I'll actually go ahead and list out some of them right now because I know I'm gonna get them in the Q&A and I just um, am not able to answer them yet. Um, but questions related to whether we can upgrade ourselves to trains, um, whether we can um, uh, go ahead and change our uh, flights on our own and, and leave later than we wanted to. Uh, 
what does you know there, there's certain specific questions that unfortunately i don't have the answers for you just yet because it's just as far as the, the process goes in saudi it's just too early to be able to to, to have answers to them that doesn't mean we're not going to answer them in the future it just means we don't have the answers um, from the government or from the appropriate uh, authority on the matter to be able to provide them to you yet um, so just keep that in mind uh, as far as timeline goes because we're not expecting um, the information from Nusuk for at least another week until whenever the sales period ends um, and then a couple of days after that, we can't get started on the very specific things we want to do. For example, there's going to be specific WhatsApp groups made for each and every single package that only has the people for those packages that are private. Um, so we don't have to deal with any sort of issues with um, uh, some of the challenges of these bigger public groups. Um, but we can't get started on that until we get the final data from the SOC and are able to confirm who is in what package, right? So there's stuff like this that has to get delayed um, until that data comes in. But the things that we can get started, right, regardless of whether selling ends or whether um, we receive your official information is our pre hud seminars. Um, those for me are something that can be open to the public as well. Um, anyone should be able to benefit from the knowledge that our scholars will be sharing with you. They'll be put up on YouTube. So I, I feel comfortable starting those sooner rather than later. I know people have a lot of questions. Um, I want you to be able to meet the scholars that will be on the ground with you um, anyways, sooner rather than later. Um, so inshallah, inshallah, after Eid al-Fitr, we'll start those webinars um, and we'll get started with that, uh, with the religious um, uh, seminars uh, after Eid. So I think Eid is on the 9th and then the weekend of the 14th, 15th, we'll go ahead and schedule our first webinar. Um, yep, so that's that. That's our plan with, with that stuff. Um, you know, in the meantime, you know, you've, we've got not too long, less than 10 days till the end of Ramadan. So inshallah, take this time to focus on your uh, personal ibadah, your tarawi, your qiyam, um, you know, your Ramadan um, uh Ibada and inshallah after Eid we'll get started on making sure you're prepared both for the physical aspects the logistical aspects the um, religious the spiritual aspects of Hajj so you know at this point again if you've been to 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 the webinars that we've been doing if you've caught them on the YouTube channel you'll know that we we do this we try to do do very detailed in-depth information for you guys and we'll continue to do so so I wanted to go ahead and make sure I give a little bit of a brief overview or a sneak peek, you could say, as far as what we'll go ahead and cover in these webinars, right? So you'll get a chance to meet your specific guide. Again, that's not going to be assigned, unfortunately, until we get that NUSUK backend data, until sales is over, and then a, a guide will be assigned to each person. Um, reviewing your Hajj itinerary, um, basically, you know, whatever package you're in, you'll get a step-by-step, day-by-day breakdown of where you're going to be, what you're going to be doing, all of that stuff with your guides, um, your packing list. I know there's a lot of questions on stuff, on what's provided, what isn't provided. We'll go over that. Um, just going over the five days of Hajj um, with the religious scholars, having them explain to you the different, break, the different steps. Um, and, you know, uh, that will be provided in uh, multiple languages. So in addition to English, it'll be provided in Arabic, Urdu, Bangla. Um, so hopefully, inshallah, we're able to accommodate everyone, a specific women's guides to cover the women's issues, preparing for the spiritual journey, inshallah, preparing for the physical journey. Um, we're in the last 10 days of Ramadan, um, so people may not have the time to do it, but definitely after Ramadan is over, you guys should start um, walking every day, building up your stamina, um, as far as walking goes, so you have a more comfortable experience once you're on the ground. Um, start with the walk, you know, with the, a walk around the block and inshallah build yourself up from there. Um, and then support for caregivers. This is a really important one to me. I know a lot of you may not be joining your uh, elderly family members on this HUD journey, but are the ones who step in, join the webinars for them, are the ones to communicate with me. Um, so it's really important for me to connect with you guys, make sure we're, we're best uh, supporting your families. Um, uh, as well as for the folks who may be joining their families um, but need that additional guidance on uh, how to navigate uh, Saudi Arabia with, with someone in a wheelchair or with someone who may have special needs. Okay, so just to give you a basic idea on what the organization will look like because, uh, you know, we're expecting this process to be 
you know, we're in this limbo period, but as soon as we get that list, things are going to progress very, very quickly. So I wanted to make sure I go ahead and give you guys at least a little bit of an idea of how things are going to be managed. You are going to be organized by your land package. Um, now, I know the names can be a little bit confusing in Nusuk, um, but what I mean by land package is all the different versions of the same thing, right? So luxury line one was broken up into luxury line one, two luxury line one, and three luxury line one. All three of those packages from a land perspective are the same. You arrive in Medina on the same day, you go to Mecca on the same day, you leave for for the US on the same day, the services provided are the same, the hotels provided are the same, the only difference is um, what type of flights were offered. Uh, basically, you know, based on what flight could be offered, we had to go ahead and separate into three different categories. And this was the case for line two, for line three, for the shifting lines, for line four, for everything. Um, um, so just keep that in mind that the scholars and guides will be working as a cohesive team um, for that one land package. So everyone who's in either one of these three, for example, would be in one WhatsApp group. You guys will be doing a lot of the tours, a lot of the different, you know, for example, your Ziyadah tour in Medina, your Roda permit for um, uh, Masjid al -Nabwi, all of this stuff will be done together. Um, and one of the main reasons why we do this idea of, you know, everyone will be assigned a specific guide to you that's one to 47, but, you know, we have to keep a mix between the male and female guides in order to make sure uh, our female uh, hajis are better served. Um, so, so, in order to make sure you're able to, to have a guide of the same gender, we have everyone work in a group so that even if you're a male who's been assigned a female guide or you're a female who's been assigned a male guide, their jobs are to just worry about your logistics, but overall together they'll worry about, they'll work together to, to help guide you throughout the whole entire process, inshallah. So I hope that helps clarify things on as far as how the packages work and as far as, um, how the itineraries will work. So for example, you know, we were talking about Hajj itineraries, luxury line one will have a dedicated webinar just going over the itinerary for them uh, with all the different details as far as what will be do done what day, what lectures will be provided on which days once you're on the ground um, and what your movements will look like as well. Okay, so one of the things that I do know, I'm, I'm very aware of and I do sincerely apologize about is how, um, delayed our responses have been in the last now we're going on 10 days um with the with the with the communications and that really just has to do with the onslaught of um uh messages we've been getting between not only our confirmed hajis but people who are still trying for round three right uh alhamdulillah those youtube videos are really helpful um they've kind of gone viral in the sense that there's a lot of people who who are um calling in for assistance with e-wallet issues and different issues. And so messages are getting buried in the chat, which, you know, in, in the messages uh, or in WhatsApp. Um, and so I do sincerely apologize for that. We'd always plan to have a dedicated phone, phone line for you folks. Um, it's already, you know, up and in the works. And now instead of waiting for the phone, um, for us to get the backend data from Nusuk, um, we want to go ahead and make sure we're providing it to you guys. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I don't wanna put it in a general space where, where people who may not have a confirmed package are using it um, because these folks are there dedicated for those who've already purchased a package. And these this customer service line is basically going to be active from now until after Hudge. And it'll be manned 24 seven. You'll be able to call in or message on that WhatsApp number that will be provided to you uh, at any time for the questions you may have. Um, so the numbers that will get this before, the, the people who get this before um, I get that official data from Nusuk is anyone who goes ahead and fills out the Google form and has one of our packages um, listed. And to be honest, for package specific questions, they're only going to be able to answer them for the packages supported by our offices anyway. So that's just a little bit of information there. I do apologize if it, if it seems a little gatekeepy, it's, it's just because, um, we're trying to, to separate between folks who are still in the process of doing sales, have them reach out to the phone number that you guys have all been using, and then have a specific dedicated line to those who have already purchased packages um, so that they're getting their questions answered in a timely manner as well. Okay, 
So um, this was just our overall our WhatsApp and stuff like that. I'm just going to go ahead and skip over. This is the phone number that everyone's familiar with at this point um, uh, for the U.S. offices. And you can continue to use this number is, uh, in addition to the number you'll be provided. Um, if you fill out that Google form, I'm going to repost it one more time in the WhatsApp group. Uh, inshallah, I'll go ahead and take out all the emails and send out an email blast, um, probably either late night today or by early morning tomorrow at the latest with the with the phone number so that you guys have that dedicated information. Um, and if you happen to still be sticking around in this webinar, um, you know, and you're in a European package or you're from, uh, you know, the UK or from anywhere else in the world and aren't necessarily in packages supported by neural fudges offices, you can always give a call or uh, leave a message to the al Raji main office and they'll be able to assist you as well. Um, again, you're always welcome to join our webinars and um, uh, learn from them, of course. Uh, it's just for many of your specific questions related to your specific packages, it's going to vary, right? Uh, and I wouldn't have the details for it because it's not something that was built by me or supported by me. Um, so it is really important that you connect with the local agency supporting your package and that um, you're able to go ahead and uh, uh, find out that information directly. So hopefully, inshallah, um, I was able to answer a majority of questions. I'm sure there's going to be more questions. Uh, and I did see people going in and out. Um, so I'm sure people may, uh, might may have missed part of this uh, presentation. What I'll say is that I am going to go, I did go ahead and record it. Inshallah, I will go ahead and post it on YouTube um, so that people can take a look at it later. What I'm going to do right now is go ahead and open up the Q&A. Um, there's like 200, almost 250 people here. So I'm expecting a lot of questions. And inshallah, I'll go ahead and try to, con you know, do generalized answers based on um, the, the types of inquiries we get. So I just went ahead and opened up the Q&A. You can go ahead and leave your question there. Okay, inshallah. Let's take a look here. 